Let's get ready to ride because it's bike week on India. If you have ever wondered what KL would look like if everyone dressed dapper, well wonder no more because the distinguished gentleman's ride KL is finally here. Then we went for a date with a classic Italian beauty. Nope, not Sofia Loren but the Moto Guzzi V7 Classic. Then we went off the tarmac and onto some hardcore remote terrain on trail bikes. Now enjoy the episode. This is where we are not only riding through Kuala Lumpur to share with the KLites the beauty of classic bikes but also to raise awareness about the dangers of prostate cancer and also to raise some money for it. So, in the words of Sir Remington Silverstein, the organizer of Distinguished Gentleman's Drive Global, ride on, chat, let's go. DGR KL 14 started early for most of us, gathering at the car park of Stadium Madeka as early as 7.30 a.m. The route would take us from Stadium Madeka to Tugu Negara and on to our first stop, Dataran Madeka. Then cool drinks awaited us at Pavilion KL. And from there, a nostalgic stop at the ANW outlet in PJ before ending the ride at an Arabic restaurant in Jalan Tamara. Right, the first leg of this ride, we're all riding from the start of one, which is Stadium Merdeka, and we are now heading towards Subu Negara. Uh, we have a series of stops today, and as you can see, we've got all sorts of bikes. I'm on a Vespa uh, LXV, and well, why? Because it's not classicism, and I think it's the best bike to ride after with style along with my mates over here. Let's go. This year marks the third year the ride is organised in Malaysia. A total of 250 bikes were anticipated to join this year, but the number ballooned to about 500 on the day itself. Well, you know what? This year, definitely the turnout is a lot more than expected. So why don't we just walk through a little bit and see what are the types of bikes. I mean, you've got a smorgasbord of all sorts of bikes. You've got Harley Davidson's from Sportsters to Dinas. Uh, I can also see a Cleveland over there. Now let's uh, walk further in. Um, basically, the rule is very simple. Iron bikes, no plastics, no fairing. Well, technically, yeah. Because what we want to celebrate here today is the beauty of classic bikes and also classic looking bikes. So that's why you've got the Harleys and then you've got this very classic, though I don't know what model Yamaha, this is, the plate number is CD, so that basically gives you a, an idea of how old it is. Of course, a classic bike event will not be complete without the Vespa guys making a lot of noise as well. They are normally the loudest because they are the most colorful, right? So these are the Vespas over here, continuing, of course, you've got the Royal Enfields and also the Triumph. And also you've got bikes that you can't quite put a finger on what exactly it is. Check this baby out. Okay, so now we are at the next stop, which is Pavilion KL. Of course, we have to stop at the landmark KL Mall, right? Which is precisely what we are doing here. In fact, we've taken up the entire space and also the police has basically closed off, I think, at least two lanes just for the benefit of this thing. Now, okay, let me tell you a little bit about my ride here for uh, DGR 14. Why don't the camera come closer here so we can have a look at this bike? This is, of course, 
the Vespa LXV150. It has the same setup as the uh, LX150, i.e. the same engine. However, the only difference is this bike has been made to look even more classic than the LX150. How? How classic? Well, first of all, you will notice that the headlamps are actually detached from uh, the entire steering setup. In fact, this entire steering module or rather handle module is completely different from the um, LX150. It's got uh, more chrome, it's got more uh, retro touches lah, basically to put. And then the saddle, this is the main difference. This is how you basically, first and foremost, tell the difference between an LX and an LXV. You've got the two-seater configuration. Yes, the LX also has a two-seater, but it's one bench, where uh, in the LXV, you've got two separate benches for uh, the bike. And then um, you've also got the rear rack. Uh, in some cases, most of the guys, what they do is, and I can see a lot of the guys who's riding LXVs here, this is what they do. They actually add another rack up front here, adding to the even more retro look. Um, and of course, what's a Vespa without a fly screen, right? For now, how's about we go inside and check out what else is in store right here at DGR14. Let's go. I tell you what, man, I kid you not, the, being in a mall in this seat is, and wearing something like this is a great respite. Uh, Pavilion KL has been so helpful. They've actually, you know, put together this thing in next to no time at all. So we're very grateful for that. But then, you know what, I'm also very grateful to this shop, which is Sako Brothers, because I'm actually dressed in Sako Brothers. And if you're thinking about doing anything dapper and you want to look like a gentleman, Seriously, there's no other place that you want to go, especially here in KL because they've got a good selection of suits and blazers and anything that a gentleman could possibly need. Even fantastic music. Of course, this is a distinguished gentleman's ride. You've seen the rides. Very, very distinguished, very handsome lah orang kata. What about the fashion? This is where you see KL stormed by handsome, strapping young men wearing suits and the works. This is fashion galore outside Fashion Week. Let's go and see what some of the get-ups look like, shall we? <laughs> So this is the final checkpoint of DJRKL 2014. It's been a rip-roaring success. Everybody had their bikes out, it's beautiful. Everybody's dressed very nicely. What's happening right now is they are doing the lucky draw and also the prize giving ceremony. I better get my ticket out to see what my number is. My number is 143. Everybody's having a really good time. Now, the main reason why everybody came out is because everybody wanted to be stylish and have a good time riding their precious bikes. But at the same time, it was so that we could raise money for prostate cancer and raise awareness. Now, the global target was 1 million bucks, but they surpassed that figure and now it's at 1.5 million bucks. And in Malaysia alone, we've managed to catch, uh, capture something around 4,000 US dollars. And I think that's a great, great thing. So it's a good job to everybody out here. And guess what? DJR KL15 is definitely going to be coming back much bigger and also even more beautiful okay you've been watching india and we'll see you again soon bye bye <laughs>